to this video on factoring polynomials using greatest common factor or GCF. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine the greatest common multiple for a polynomial and you should be able to determine the greatest common variable and factor out the lowest degree of the common variable. So let's do a little bit of a review before we start. So we have in this school year been given problems like this and I've asked you to simplify where you would distribute because the a is next to the parentheses so we would distribute a times 3a would be 3a squared a times 2 would be 2a okay let's try this again on our second one let's go ahead and distribute it. negative 2b times b is negative 2b squared negative 2b times 5b is negative 10b squared and negative 2b times negative 2 is positive 4b this one has to go a little bit long further just because these two guys right here are like terms so that'll be negative 12 b squared plus 4b and then this last one 4xy <clears throat> times xy so we'll have 4x times x is x squared y times y is y squared and 4xy times negative 3 will be negative 12xy so what we have done in the past is you've distributed to get an answer. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you this answer and you're going to undistribute and you're going to write it like this. Okay, so it's going to be using the reverse distributive property. What we'll be looking for is the largest factor of all the coefficients. Remember the coefficients are the numbers and the smallest power or the smallest exponent on the common variable. So when we did these problems initially up here you distributed by multiplying. When you're going to take out the GCF you're going to do the opposite. You're going to divide. So when we multiplied variables with like bases we added their exponents. So this is x to the first times x to the first became x squared. When you divide, you have to do the opposite. You're going to subtract their exponents. Okay, so first let's get a little bit of a feel for what I'm talking about when I say the largest of the factor of all the coefficients and the smallest power of the common variable. Okay, so 18 and 24, you're looking for the biggest number that they share as a factor. Um, so they're both even so two could go into them but they would still both remain even if we took a two out which means that's not the biggest number that they share in common um, and so if we think about it i always look at the smaller number and it's not 18 is not going to go into 24 so how can i make 18 so two uh, two times nine well nine doesn't go into 24 two does but two is too small and three times six three will go into both but six will also go into both so six is really the small the biggest number that they have in common six that's the largest factor of all of the coefficients now we want to find the smallest power of the common variable so they both have an x and the smallest power between those two x's is x squared so we're going to write x squared this term has a y but this term does not so they don't have a y in common so this will be our GCF okay let's try it again get a feel for it what is the largest number that will go into both 21 and 7 evenly or sorry 14 let me just give you the answer so the number is 7 goes into both 21 and 14 evenly both terms have an x the smallest power is x to the first which we just write as x both terms have a y the smallest power is y to the first so we write it as y so 7xy is our GCF 
All right, so let's go ahead and try some of these others. And we're going to write these in what we call factored form. And what I mean by that is we're going to have our GCF out front. And then we're going to divide our GCF out of our expression. And whatever's left over will go in the parentheses that follows it. All right. So let's take a look. 3 and 6, they have a 3 in common. So we're going to end up dividing here. So I'm going to put a division line. There are both terms have a u, the smallest power is to the first, so 3u, that 3u is our GCF. Now, let's write that there. So we've got our GCF right there. We're going to put some parentheses and we're going to divide the GCF out of this expression and whatever's left over after the division is going to go right here. So 3u divided by 3u, the whole thing cancels to a 1. And then I have a negative 6 divided by 3 gives me a negative 2. u squared divided by u to the first, really you're subtracting the exponents, 2 minus 1 leaves 1u left. So this is what we call factored form. So the idea is if you distribute the 3u through this, you're going to end up with the same answer. So 3u times 1 is 3u, and 3u times negative 2u is negative 6u squared, which is the same as what we started with. Okay, so we are not changing the value, we are just changing how it looks. All right, let's try the second one to the right. So 2 and 5, there's no number in common. So uh, how about x cubed and x squared? They both have an x with the smallest power being squared. So we're going to divide both sides, both of these, with an x squared. x squared is our GCF. So what's going to be left over when I factor out my GCF? is 2 has nothing to divide by, it's really a 1 underneath, so it remains a 2. x cubed divided by x squared would be 3 minus 2, so there would be a single x left. 5 is being divided by a, a understood 1 right here, so it doesn't change its value. x squared divided by x squared, 2 minus 2 is 0, meaning we're not going to have any x's written here. And that will finish it. This is our factored form. You can just do a quick check. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times 5 is 5x squared. So this is our factored form. Okay, let's try a couple more here. This bottom one in this section, 6 and 9, they have a 3 in common. So we'll take a 3. Uh, both terms do not have a u. Do you see that? So the u is not in common, so we don't want to talk about it. What about the v? I got a v here and I got two v's there. So the smallest power is v to the first. So my GCF is 3v. And what will be left over? 6 divided by 3 is 2. u doesn't have anything to divide to reduce it, so it's going to just remain u. And v divided by v, they're both v to the first, so 1 minus 1 is 0, so there's no v's left to write right there. Then we have negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. v squared divided by v to the first, 2 minus 1 is 1, so there's a single v left. Okay. All right, let's try this one last one in this section, and then we're going to um, add one little idea in that we need to be sure to pay attention to. Okay, 6, 3, and 9. They can all be divided by 3. That's the biggest number they have in common. So I have a z on two of the terms, but not the third term. What that means is I can't divide off a z. They'd all have to have a z to make that happen. So my GCF in this case is just a 3. Okay, 
6 divided by 3 is 2, and there's nothing to reduce the z, so it's going to remain z squared. Negative 3 divided by 3 is a negative 1. You don't have to write the 1, it's an understood 1, so, but it is negative, so I'm going to put the negative sign. And there's nothing to reduce the z, so it stays z. And then positive 9 divided by 3 is positive 3. And you can do a quick check. 3 times 2z squared is 6z squared. 3 times negative z is negative 3z. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, that's our factored form for those problems. Sometimes we, we need to pay attention to what if the leading coefficient is negative? Remember, the leading coefficient is the number in the front. If the number all the way up front is negative, for the next steps we're going to be doing, this is not allowed. So we need to get rid of the negative sign, and the way you would do that is divide by a negative, because you would have a negative divided by a negative, which makes it positive. Okay, so otherwise it's going to be exactly the same. It's just what we divide by is negative. So when I look, 2, 14, and 6 all have a 2 in common. But it needs to be a negative 2 because the first term was negative. Okay, then I have m's on all three terms with the lowest power just being to the first. So my GCF here is negative 2m. All right, now let's see what happens. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 will be a positive 1. We don't normally write the ones, but I'll write it just so to kind of help you see. Now it's a positive number. That's what we wanted to have happen there. Then we have m to the fourth divided by m, so it's 4 minus 1, so that means there's 3 left over. 14 divided by negative 2 is negative 7. m squared divided by m, 2 minus 1 leaves 1m one left over. And then I have negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. m divided by m, 1 minus 1 is 0, there's no m's left. That's the end of our factoring on this one. All right, let's try, let's try one more for sure. Let's skip down to the sky over here and see how it is. So the first term is negative, so whatever we divide by is negative. Okay, 12 doesn't go into 32 evenly. So I'm looking for things that can multiply to 12 that will help me get to, to that can be a factor of 32. So we have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 6 goes into 12, but 6 doesn't go into 32. Um, 3 times 4, and 2 is a small number. Let's see if there's another number. 2 will go into both of those. But let's check 3 times 4 gives us 12. 4 goes into 12, and 4 goes into 32, and 4 is bigger than 2. So we're going to use the 4 here. I have x cubed and x. They both have x's, but only x to the first in common. y squared and y squared. They both have y's and the smallest power is 2. So my GCF is 4, negative 4, x, y squared. Now we're going to simplify and get what's left over to go into the parentheses. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is 3 x cubed divided by x, 3 minus 1 is 2, so there's two x's left there. y squared divided by y squared, 2 minus 2 is 0, no y's are left. Positive 32 divided by negative 4 is negative 8. x divided by x is 1 minus 1, no x is left. y squared divided by y squared is 2 minus 2, no y is left. And we're finished. All right, let's take a look at the back. All right, so let's do a quick summary of our notes. So what do we need to remember to do if the co to the coefficients when we undistribute? So when we're undistributing, we need to remember that we're dividing. So we are going to divide. And when we divide by the factors, we need to divide the largest factor. of the coefficients. OK, 
okay? So remember, when you're looking for a common factor, it needs to be the largest factor, and you're going to divide it out. Um, the second point that we want to summarize, what do you need to do to the exponents when you're undistributing? So when we distribute and we're multiplying common variables, we add their bases. So when we do the opposite and we're dividing it out, we need to subtract the exponents when dividing. Okay, and the last thing I want to be sure that you remember out of this, what do we need to remember when the leading coefficient is negative? We need to remember that we will be dividing by a negative number because we want the first term to be positive. All right, so the last little bit of practice here. We're going to identify what the GCF is and then put it all together in factored form over here. So in our problem here, we have 14 and 8, and the largest number that they both have in common is a 2. So I know my GCF at least has a 2 in it. Then I notice they both have x's, and the smallest power is 2, so x squared. But they don't have, both have y's. Only one of the terms has a y, so we, I cannot factor out a y. So 2x squared is my GCF. To write this in factored form, you put the GCF out front. And then what's going to be left when we undistribute or divide off our 2x squared? So 14 divided by 2 is 7. x squared divided by x squared is 2 minus 2, which is 0, which means there's no x's left there. Negative 8 divided by 2 is going to be negative 4. x cubed divided by x squared, 3 minus 2 is 1, so you have 1x left. And the y has nothing to reduce it in the denominator, so it's going to come along. I'm going to do one more, and I want you to try the rest of these. And you can check when you return to class how you did. So let's identify a GCF here. Both terms have an x. And the lowest power is to the first, so they both have an x. There's a y and a y, so they both have y's, with the lowest power being to the first, so we say y. Both terms have a z, with the lowest power to be, being to the first, so they both have a z in common. So the GCF is x, y, z. So let's write it in factored form and see what's left over when we undistribute this. So we have x divided by x, 1 divided by 1 minus 1 is 0, so there's no x's left. y squared divided by y is 2 minus 1, which is 1, meaning there's one y left. z divided by z is 1 minus 1, which is 0, so there's no z's left in the first term. Now we'll go to the next term. We have x cubed divided by x, 3 minus 1 is 2, that means there's two x's left still. y divided by y is 1 minus 1, which is 0, so no y's are left, and z divided by z is 1 minus 1, and no z's left. Okay, so what I want you to do is try these remaining three problems and come check for the answers. Hopefully that was helpful, I'll see you in class.